Good evening, Paul. Hi, thank you for having me. Welcome to our Smart and Digital Channel. It's an honor for us to receive you today with us, man. Well, it's an honor for me to think that somebody wants to talk to me for an hour. <laughs> hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's an honor for us, man. Uh, we are, I am so nervous, man, today. Wow. Oh, no, no. After, I... after wow, well, maybe one year of channel. I am never because today is my first live in English. Oh, really? God. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, first... I'm glad. I'm glad you're not making me do this in Portuguese because I don't speak any Portuguese. <laughs> other, other that one thing that Alex told me how to say. What would I say? Uh, hope to see you there. I said that in Portuguese, and that's all I can. Yeah, do. but <laughs> what's so fun? Because some people ask me, "Wow, he said this." No, no way. What, what, what English? <laughs> no, uh, I had to practice that for 20 minutes. That's, uh, that's a, a guy I write music with. He lives in uh, Sao Paulo. So I, I said, look, I, I should probably say something, just a little soundbite in Portuguese. So he sent me a whole little like uh, message on WhatsApp on how to uh, say. No, but, but, what's, good, man. What, what's so good? What's so good? I, I, I like, I like a lot. Visual say a lot. <laughs> you there. <laughs> what, what's perfect? What's perfect? And man, uh, I usually start asking one question for my guests. Sure. And I will, I will to start our conversation with the, uh, that question. How did you start your ultrasound journey? Because we know that, that the, the MDT area is, is still UNO. Yeah, so my uh, UT journey was, um, without going into the whole life story thing, I kind of tripped into it. I think a lot of people accidentally get into NDT. And mm. I am I am no different. I lost my job. I couldn't find another job. Uh, some of the people, I, I'm old enough. I'm I'm 45. So, in the year 2000 mm -hmm. was the big tech bubble crash, right? That was that was the the wow. big tech bubble, and it affected everything. And uh, as a young engineer, uh, I got laid off, and I couldn't find another job. So I ended up. Uh, running into a friend at the grocery store and I was I was going to be laid off they had given me a, like a six month window like we're going to use you for the next six months and then you won't have a job so mm -hmm. during that time span I was trying to find a job but of course there weren't any jobs so I ran into a friend at the grocery store and he says you should go back to school and get your master's degree because Ross the, my friend mm -hmm. was Ross he was at university taking his master's degree And I said, Ross, you're crazy. I, <laughs> I, I barely made it out of university alive. I, I, had, I had low marks. I yeah. made it. But I, it mm -hmm. By the time I got to the end, I was, I was in the middle of the class. But when I graduated, I didn't want to have anything to do with university again. And, I, I, don't, I don't want to back this place anymore. <laughs> no, no. So, but, then, but then Ross says the magic words. Ross says, they'll pay you. They'll pay you to go to university. I'm like, that's insane. I, they're going to pay me. He said, I'm like, how much will they pay me to go to university? And he says, ah, enough to buy beer and pizza and pay for rent. <laughs> so I said, that's good enough for me because that's the only option I have. So I went uh, back to the school and I talked to the mm -hmm. graduate secretary and she gave me a meeting with Uh, my supervisor, who was the person who was going to be, and the project was, um, it was pipeline integrity. So, you know, oil and gas pipelines, mm -hmm. they were sending the pieces to the University of Waterloo. And uh, they had developed an ultrasonic scanner that would sit on the outside of the pipe. And there was an array of uh, receivers. Okay, so there was like, uh, I think it was eight or 10 of them around in a circle and you had a, a piece over here that would transmit sound air air coupled ultrasonic so 40 kilohertz still mm -hmm. too high to hear uh, mm -hmm. but it was a, a very wide beam and it would get picked up by these different receivers and then it could tell where on the pipe it was so that plus the laser shooting down into the pipe 
would give you the corrosion depth. So you basically just moved this thing by hand all over the pipe and it would, you could map corrosion. Um, this is before Creaform. Uh, so I, I don't know if you're familiar with what Creaform is. Mm -hmm. Creaform is a company that makes the, the laser scanners that you just kind of point. You know, the, the, it's like a magic yeah, wand. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So that was it. I, I started a two year journey at the university playing with air coupled ultrasonic transducers hooked up to an oscilloscope and I had to program uh, the computer um, through a, a data acquisition card to transmit and receive ultrasound signals. And Did you that use was it. Um, a scan? Yeah, it was uh, all a scan, and then there was a digital gate mm -hmm. uh, that we programmed. And uh, depending on when it received the sound, um, it would then store that. And you, if you can imagine, if you have ten receivers in a ring. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I have a transmitter and I'm shooting the down. The... Yeah. And then each one of the receivers picks the sound up at a different time. So it triangulates anyways. Uh, yeah, it, it gave us the axial and the circumferential position. And then we did the laser. So that was my thing. And then when I, when I graduated uh, from my master's degree, I got hired by a company in Edmonton, which is, uh, it was CanSpec at the time, but it's now known as Acuron, Acuron Group. Yeah, I know. And I, I got hired to go there and finish this. Now, that was, that was a long time ago. That was almost 20 years ago. Um, that was before Creaform. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we thought we were onto something, um, but of course it was nothing compared to Creaform. If I could go oh. back in time, I would do something different, but, but, uh, I would do something different for my master's, but I certainly would not do anything different now. Uh, getting into NDT and ultrasound was really lucky on my part. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's just no turning back once you, once you get that NDT bug. In, the, in your first um, certification? Uh, was mag particle, actually. So what happened was I... Um, I ended up losing that job too. So there was <laughs> again, <laughs> yeah. This is you just get up, you just get up, you get going, and then you trip and fall down. So uh -huh. uh, the second one was the oil crash of two thousand and seven. So I, uh, you know, I, our our grandparents lived through much bigger hardships mm -hmm. than we did. Okay, so the fact that I went through the the tech bubble crash of two thousand. And the oil crash of 2007 is nothing, mm -hmm. right? We didn't, we yes, didn't fight I in any. Remember, I remember. Yeah, we didn't fight in any wars, and we didn't get conscripted to go overseas or anything. It's not that mm -hmm. big a hardship. But um, what happened was I got laid off from Acuron Group, and mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, move back to um, I near Toronto right now uh, and be an inspection manager at a small NDT company. So they were looking mm -hmm. for somebody to, to manage. Uh, and, uh, and we wanted to move uh, back to Ontario. So I did that. And there, um, it, I was a working manager. So I would manage people, but also go into the field occasionally and do some work. So I, I got a, uh, it was a lot of crane inspections, uh, steel inspections, mm -hmm. visual and magnetic particle. So uh, one of the deals was, if you're going to do this job, you're going to get a mag particle ticket. So, wow. so I did. I got a mag particle ticket. And, uh, and then what happened with ultrasound was that uh, they didn't have their own ultrasound uh, a UT level two. They mm -hmm. had some people they were using, but they didn't have any of their own. And I had never considered it before, but because of mm -hmm. my time at university, I had two years worth of ultrasound time. Yes. So uh, I wrote the test and got a UT level two. And then from there, it just accelerated. I just really, really liked it. It was um, the practical application of what I was doing. Um, my, my degree is in applied science. That, that's mm -hmm. basically what an engineer yeah, yeah. is. Okay, so mm -hmm. like there's, there's pure science. Right, where chemistry and physics and you study the theories. 
Mm -hmm. but then the engineer takes those theories and applies them. So at, at Waterloo, we graduate with uh, uh, degrees in applied science. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, ultrasound was the perfect way to apply that science. And I love it. I do it every day, <sighs> almost all day. I dream about it, but maybe that's not healthy. <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah. I, I like a lot because when you are, uh, are uh, in a university, you study the, the theories and the physical with the math. And when you can um, put this together, wow, I love UT. UT. And, yeah, I found it. It's really practical. There's a lot of things about being a mechanical engineer that are practical and tangible. Like you can, you can apply something and see the result or feel the result. Mm -hmm. um, whereas uh, I, I was in computer engineering for a short time, and I, I, I didn't do very well. Um, but I found it uh, difficult because you had to imagine what you were doing uh, because you mm -hmm. can't see the electrons. Right? Yes, I, mean, I suppose they can. They can light up a light bulb, but. Uh, but I was more interested in, uh, in, in gears and levers and things that move. And, and then ultrasound was, was great because you can, you can basically, you're, you can see through steel with sound. Mm -hmm. we, in, in ultrasound, we can't hear it, but we see it. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm training uh, my, 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 uh, my summer student right now, Nolan. Uh, he and I have been spending lots of time together. And... Um, and I just think it's really neat to, to, to watch him use the machine. And both of us are, we're seeing sound, mm -hmm. right? It, the, all the A-scan display is just a visual of the actual sound. I find it fascinating. Yes, it's, it's perfect. I don't know if the same in, in, uh, in Canada, but in Brazil, when I got my, my graduate there, I just stood one discipline about NDT. My course had three, uh, oh, over 3,000 um, hours, and my NDT discipline had 30 hours. I don't even remember NDT being mentioned at all during my university time. It, maybe it was, but you know, when you get to like third and fourth year, they let you pick mm -hmm. courses. I guess I didn't pick any of the courses that had anything to do with NDT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, per. <laughs> and I, I saw that, that that you start your career as a project engineer at Volvo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, that, that you know what I think project engineer is one of those terms that they call mm -hmm. every junior engineer is yeah, either, yeah. is is a project engineer. It means mm -hmm. I. It's kind of like a. Uh, it should be it should be a project engineer in training really is what it should be um, mm -hmm. because uh, you're not really allowed to call yourself an engineer until you get your mm -hmm. engineering license um, but it's it's just a general term um, mm -hmm. yes. and it, it was great working at, working at Volvo um, it was uh, construction equipment so not not the automotive stuff or the boat stuff but uh, uh, big dirt movers. <laughs> if you will, I'd be push, pushing dirt. And uh, it was really good because in uh, Canada at the facility that I worked at, we designed them mm -hmm. upstairs and built them downstairs. So the idea is from upstairs, you could go downstairs and walk down the assembly line and watch the thing that you designed get made. And if you messed it up, mm -hmm. you heard about it because somebody very angry came upstairs and yelled at you for being a, you know being a young engineer and not making the right move and uh, I remember uh, I had a really good boss at Volvo and one day I was tasked with uh, changing probably something as simple as changing the length of a bolt it was probably that simple right but mm -hmm. because I'm a young engineer I'm nervous I, I you know you don't want to pick the wrong thing and then have it come back at you. So mm -hmm. I went to my boss and I said, John, what if I, what if it doesn't work? And he looks at me, he, he pulls his glasses down and he looks <laughs> at me over his glasses and he says, 
well, you're going to have to fix it then, won't you? <laughs> and, he his back over again, and he goes back to his computer. You are the so, one, man. Go. <laughs> so you know what? So, so I thought that was perfect because he's basically telling me, do it. And if it doesn't yes. work, live with the consequences. So just about six months ago, I've been living, I've been hearing his voice in my head for a long time. Yeah. Anytime I get nervous about making a decision, it's mm. just, well, like, what, like w you've got yourself in a position where you have to make a decision. Mm. Do it. Like jump out of the yeah. plane. Trust that your parachute is packed. Just do it. So I actually called him six months ago and I said, man, that, that sound bite, that little quote has lived with me for 20 years and it, it was, it made a really big deal. Right. So now I thought it was just a, a good thing that I had him as a boss. Mm. Yes. My, my, my start is, is the same. Your stars. Yes. I, I start my career as a, a project. Uh, I was a, a weld designer. Okay. I don't know what I mean. Makes sense. Weld design. Yeah. I put the the type of weld for the the joint. Ah, but but weld joint, um, angle joint, T joint. Well, and in this heart as a, a a designer, and after I I, I discovered the the ultrasound. And until there, yeah. So just, how did you? But how did you discover the ultrasound? Yes, I, I had a friend. I had a uh, some friend that was a, a ultrasound specter, okay. and I wa <laughs> it was funny because I was doing the the, the weld inspector course. Okay, and I and I, I know one guy that was a, a, a ultrasound instructor, and he told me, "Come on, man, come to me, come to my class." Is better than the the well inspector. <laughs> really, I can. Can I? Yes, you can. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Come tomorrow. Tomorrow you you came to my class. Okay. <laughs> and I I start the, that class and then finish the course, the UT, UT call, and until there, I got my certification. Uh, wow. Well, uh, on 2019. Okay. And until now, I am a, a UT inspector. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was was a better choice than for me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and and in Brazil, like mm -hmm. a, uh, so in Canada, we have a national program for mm -hmm. certification. We have a, a, a Canadian code, which is based off of an ISO standard, and then we uh, we have a national certification program. Do they do the same thing in Brazil? Yes, yes, we have a, a, a organization, a band. Yeah. Yes, they uh, they organize all certification, but you can do the course in a school. Yeah. In a specific schools, you know, but the the of the testing, you can uh, you can go there and and do the test at the band. Okay, so it sounds very similar to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have, uh, we, you can take the course at any, a, a lot of places across the country. Yeah, and, a, specific, and, yeah a specific place, huh? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Not, not any place, but there's, there's a list of places on the website that mm -hmm. will tell you. So when people want to come to Canada to do NDT, um, they have to have, uh, we call it CGSB or Canadian General mm -hmm. Standards Board. Uh -huh. Okay, so they have to have that NDT certification. Um, I, I, almost always. Uh, there are some cases where they can do NDT for a specific company uh, under their ASNT program or their SNT TC1A mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. um, so, so sometimes that works. Uh, and then if you do, we actually don't in Canada have a phased array or TOFT within the CGSB uh, yeah. uh, standard. No. So for, for phased array and TOFT, we use... What uh, is the, the standard they, they use? Uh, we use the... Uh, we get certified to PCN or C-SWIFT. Yes. ISO, um, ISO 9712. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, that's, it's just Canada has... It's taken a long time and it's still ongoing to get our own phased array and TOFT certification. So right now, anybody 
pretty much anybody I think that I've mm -hmm. ever met in Canada who does it is either PCN or CSWIP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's perfect, man. Um, I have a question for you because some people that, that uh, I talk uh, told me, oh, yes, because of the NDT, I got to travel to another country and, uh, and do inspections in uh, maybe Europe and India. Uh, did you travel outside of Canada because of ultrasound? Uh, once. <laughs> you know, and, and I've talked to lots of people that have really neat stories about traveling to uh, like Romania or Russia or Norway or Malaysia or some places that are just, mm -hmm. you know, I can only look at them on Wikipedia, right? That, that's, that's my exposure mm -hmm. to those places. But I traveled to Arizona or the United States mm -hmm. once for a one day job. That's my wow. extent of work outside of the country. I would, when COVID is over, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we can, we can travel internationally again. I am looking forward to going to new places. Yeah. But right and now, how, just just that one day. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but how how is the market in can in Canada? Um, so the NDT market in Canada is um, it's it's up and down. It's very uh, like spring, yeah, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of like February to maybe May. Uh, so to, to two to three months where there's a lot of work. Uh, there's the your spring your spring shutdowns or your spring turnarounds. Uh, a lot of work out west and uh, work at the nuclear power plants in Ontario. And then in the fall, it happens again. So there's kind of mm -hmm. like two bumps in mm -hmm. Canada. Um, there's always work ongoing throughout, but those are the two really big bumps. They, they are, um, there is there, I don't know, the, the large pipeline uh, yeah. through the, the Canadian right now yeah, yeah there's uh well there's there's pipelines that run uh, well maybe not quite the length of the country and that's a that's a canadian conversation <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh there's a lot of ongoing work on for pipeline integrity uh inspections but those are usually uh contract uh like there's there's companies that have those contracts they have a dedicated number of people on those um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I ask it this because um, sometimes people ask me, "Oh, how can I work outside Brazil? I, I have I have a desire to work in Canada or United States, and it's a good opportunity to talk with the, the Canadian guy." And you know, sure. Well, uh, do they uh, is PCN or CSWIP recognized in Brazil? Yeah. Okay. Well, then there's a great way to do it uh, because mm -hmm. if you have a PCN phased array ticket or a, or then then that's great. Then that means there's something on your resume that looks good to somebody in Canada. Uh, but now is not a great time, obviously, with, with COVID. Yeah. Uh, before this and after this, um, it's, it's easier. Um, but not at the moment, it's pretty tough. Mm-hmm. In the West, uh, the, the the Canada, Vancouver, they they have a lot of cheap art and yeah, there. Uh, I'm actually not. I, I've worked in northern BC. I've mm. never worked in uh, southern uh, BC. I've worked maybe as far south as uh, like an hour south of Prince George, which for any Canadians, they clearly know that's not very far south. <laughs> it's, sort of, it's sort of in the upper echelons of British Columbia, um, mm -hmm. but uh, sort of not even really in the mountains. Um, yeah, but, 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 but the weather there is... Beautiful. Is oh, it's different. La La Land. Well, okay, so, so wet weather in Canada is funny because um, we have nothing like your weather. I, I know a couple Brazilians and... Uh, my friend Luis once showed me a picture mm -hmm. of snow once. He had but snow have once. You ever, have you ever been to Brazil? No, only virtually. When I talk to, again, I write, I write music with this guy from Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll video chat with him and he'll be walking down the street holding his phone. 
right? Oh. And that's as close as I've ever come to Brazil, looking at the the stuff behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sao Paulo is a pretty uh, is a good place, but the northeast is better there. Oh, and that's where yeah, you because are. Because right? I, 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 yeah, I'm from northeast. <laughs> yeah. And Paul, uh, how did you become become a level three? Uh, well, I'm at my previous job. I um, felt like I had done about as much as I could do. Um, so I looked at, um, I really, really liked ultrasound and I really wanted to do more of it. And I uh, wanted to get into phased array. And um, mm -hmm. as much as we tried, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't really going to happen within that company um, because it was going to be me doing it. Uh, and if I was doing it, I, I started to draw up a business plan. I, I got in front of my, my computer and I was typing up a business plan for the company for us to do phased array. And I realized I got about halfway through a, a business plan, you know, mm -hmm. a few, two or three pages saying, uh, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? What's our timeline? And I realized I was putting, I will do this and I will do that on all of the sections. And, and it, it got to the point where it was really just me that wanted to do it. It wasn't anyone else. So I decided that maybe I could do this whole NDT thing on my own. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, on my own time, pursued a level three through uh, the Canadian route and uh, just online courses. Uh, the, the level three stuff is mostly online in Canada. And all the courses I, are, are yeah. Uh, the, the, the courses online, the testing is in person. And mm -hmm. um, I did fail one of the tests. I had to go back and redo the test. It takes a long time. It took me about a year, maybe a year and a half to get through everything to get my mm -hmm. level three. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, a little over a year. And then when I got that, I gave it one more shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the phased array stuff was still not going to happen. So I decided to, um, to, to go out on my own and be a level three and an engineer uh, as a one-man company. Yeah, I think that there are a lot of people in Brazil uh, that, that wants, want to, to get a level three in another count. Well, it's, it's the, mm -hmm. I felt like in order, if you, if you wanted to start a company, um, uh, I felt like I had to be a level three, mm -hmm. um, because if you look, uh, like in Canada, they, they publish a list of everyone in the country who has, uh, an NDT certification. So you can actually look through mm -hmm. a list of over 10,000 people that, that have cert certifications. And if you count up, the number of level one UT people, you get this. And the level two UT, you get mm -hmm. this. And level three UT, you get that. So I wanted to differentiate myself uh, instead of being the you know, one of the UT2s, mm -hmm. I wanted to be one of the very few UT3s. I felt like if I did that, then my company, I, I had a shot of... Mm -hmm of making a go of it as a one man company. So it, that's, that's sort of how and why I did it. Yeah, this happened in Brazil too, man. Maybe today we have almost 260 uh, ultrasound spectrum in Brazil. Only 260? Um, yes, only. Okay. Yeah, I think there's Always. probably like maybe ten times that many in Canada. Mm -hmm. There might be like there might be more than there might be there's at least two thousand. There's got to be more than that. Two thousand. Oh yeah. Oh. But well, not level threes. No okay. level. No level, no, level three. Level three, you can account in your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We might have a like fifty or a hundred level threes. Maybe there's more. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. but, uh, do Do you have a, a tip? For uh, I want to become a, a level three right now in another country, maybe in Canada or United States. Uh, 
what should what what should I do to to become to become a level three? Yeah, to um, have a, a, a quick tip. Okay. Well, um, I spent uh, like there's lots and lots of people that have much more UT experience than I do. Okay, like mm -hmm. I'll be the first to admit that that um, I I never I did not start in NDT. I I kind of fell backwards into it and continued on with it um, at first because of necessity mm -hmm. or because the company needed somebody to do it that worked at the company. So I said, oh, I'll do it. It's uh, if you want to make a lot of money as a UT technician, you should mm -hmm. be a UT level two, be really good at it, um, work really hard and be nice to people. If there's... There's, and, and if you can do those things and be a really good UT2, then maybe it's, it's, uh, maybe it's possible to, to go in to be a level three. Mm -hmm. I think you really, you have to be engaged all the time. You have to but really, if, really love mm -hmm. it. But if I want to start to study today, okay, I will, I, I, I will start to study today. Uh, well, what you, what's hot that that I need to to know? Um, you can in Canada, you would just mm -hmm. simply go on the Canadian website, and you would find where is the training mm -hmm. provider. And in this case, I went to uh, or I took my online course through uh, what we call Cindy, which is the Canadian Institute of NDE or mm -hmm. or C I N D E. And I took my online course through them. And it's really just, if you want to be a level three, you have mm -hmm. to take the course. You can't just want it and then get it. You have to go through all the steps. And the first step is you have to be a UT level two and then take the course for a level three. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's mm -hmm. it. Yes, yeah, because in Brazil, we have a lot of metallurgy, you know, in, in a in a test oh yeah we do a lot, a lot of talks you need to know about all entities yeah but yours is the same as ours though you yours is iso ninety seven twelve right yes yes the yeah same. so it's the same curriculum mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so it, it makes sense i mean mm -hmm. it, there was a talk at one point of canada having uh like like if you had say an australian n d t certification that Canada and Australia would work together. And then uh, you could, there would be some reciprocity. Uh, there's not, there's probably a good Portuguese translation for the word reciprocity. It just sort of means like a handshake, like, um, uh, mm -hmm. like your Australian ticket is worth one Canadian ticket. And the Canadian, but I don't think that ever happened. Um, and I, I thought at one point there was an, uh, a discussion between Canada and Brazil as well. It's for, for ISO or ISO uh, schemes like Canada's scheme is ISO yours is ISO Australia is ISO. We should all be working together so that mm -hmm. when you need more technicians, they're easy to find because you just call Canada. Right. And when Canada needs more technicians, we can say, okay, which countries do we have, agreements with oh it's australia yeah. and mm -hmm. brazil right they should do that I, but they don't i talk it i've talked with uh a Bennett director yeah João Conte, and he told us that canadian uh french australia australian and, and some countries their agreement maybe yeah. 13 13 countries around the world Maybe maybe 13 countries are ISO, but I, I don't think yet that there's any formal uh, um, agreement between Canada and any other countries to have complete reciprocity. If there is, I don't know. But um, it's because there's times when you, like, you obviously you want to keep your own people busy first, mm -hmm. right? So, so every Canadian should be working before we pick up the magic phone and call the other country but it would be nice when they call the other country to have that deal already in place i have a question uh, by tiago souza in, in our chat yeah. and he told paul has worked for brazilian ultrasonic spectre in canada in canada 
so does that mean uh, so i see i see the question he says paul has worked for brazilian ultrasonic yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah does he mean does he mean Paul, do you have work for Brazilian ultrasonic inspectors in Canada? <laughs> the answer, the answer there would be no, because I'm I'm basically a, a one man company, with the exception of I do have Nolan, my my research assistant for the summer. Um, and is there any other like? Would there be any other work for Brazilian inspectors in Canada? Probably not specifically for Brazilians. It sort of be for anybody who has. Um, has a, like a, a PCN or a C-SWIP ticket. For example, my friend, uh, I have a friend who, uh, who just moved up from uh, California uh, yeah. last year. And he had a, I think he had a C-SWIP and he moved to Edmonton and now he works in Fort McMurray uh, because he had his uh, C-SWIP. So that's, and so in Brazil, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to eventually make it to Canada, uh, I would make sure that you keep your PCN and your C-SWIP phased array and TOFT alive. And some people, some people get them and then they let them go. Like they, you know, they don't renew or they don't retest or recertify. And then it just kind of expires. And I would just keep, don't, don't let it expire. You work so hard to get it. You should keep it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, uh, Paul, uh, I would like to talk about the, the, our conference. Church. If you don't know, Paul uh, is a, will be the speaker in our conference. Sivui in Portuguese, Sivui. Okay. <laughs> Conferência Internacional Virtual de Ultrasound Industrial in English, uh, International Industrial Ultrasound Conference. And could you give some spoiler for your lecture there? Yeah, yeah, I sure can. Yes. Okay, so I've been working on two major research projects um, for the last little bit. And the one I'm going to present about uh, for the, uh, did you say Sivui? Is that how I say it? Sivui? Sivui. Sivui. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sivui. Right. Okay. So, oh, like, like, oh, yes, almost in French. Eh? <laughs> Sivui. Do <laughs> you speak, um, speak French? Or? Uh, it, it petit. Um, <laughs> it, French was French was not one of my good marks in high school. So when you're when you're going to go to university, you have uh -huh. to make sure you have good marks. So I dropped French so mm -hmm. that my average would go up <laughs> and I would make it into university. Now and I feel bad because um, because I deal with lots of French in Canada. All of the ultrasound brains are in Quebec where they speak yeah, French uh -huh. and they, yeah. they all speak English very well. And I don't speak French. Well, I can read French about, <laughs> about a third, like 30% of what's written on a page. Yeah, no. well, yeah, uh, I, I, I thought, I thought that, uh, that all Canadian guys to speak French. But... All, yeah. <laughs> all Canadian guys should be, speak French because uh, it's, it's important to know two languages, I, I think, but uh, I'm I cute, don't. Cute. Little bro. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me let me tell you what. Uh, so at the conference, I'm going to talk about something called TFMI. So everybody knows what TFM is, or you've heard of it. Okay, mm -hmm. it's, it's total focusing method, and this is a way of um, uh, using a phased array ultrasound and uh, transmitting from one element and then receiving on all of the elements. And then doing that over and over and over again for every combination. And what it what, what you can do with this is uh, focus everywhere in a zone, okay, or a region, uh, and it allows you much better imaging of flaws. And uh, something I've been working on with Sonatest, well, we're calling it TFMI, and the uh, it's basically an intermodal approach to TFM. So, so TFM. Uh, if you've, if you've read about it, you see that there's things like LL, TT, TTT, TLT. There's all these different letters that go into TFM. And these are the modes of propagation. So you have to tell the, um, you have to tell the TFM algorithm what mode you're propagating in. Uh, well, whereas with TFMI, what we do is we take a whole bunch of modes usually all 
of the transverse modes. So that's 2T, 3T, 4T, and 5T. And we combine them together. Uh, we, we multiply the pixel values, and then we apply a, a filter uh, underneath to sort of bring up some other details. And what happens is, if you guess, if you're just using regular TFM, and you guess the wrong mode, let's say I'm, I'm looking at a crack, and I say, I'm going to use the 4T mode. Okay, so we, we do the presentation, I'll show you a, a proper description of what 4T means. But um, if we use 4T and we're wrong, we won't see anything. So oftentimes, when you're doing TFM, you, you might run a a 2T and a 3T and a 4T all at the same time to try to get a good picture of what you're looking at. Because you, if you're looking at a crack, w wouldn't you like to, to look like a crack on the screen? Of course you would, right? Because when we look at phased array signals, we get used to recognizing what looks like a crack. Maybe right? get a big root uh, indication, so something that's really red. Uh, let's say it's an ID connected crack, so we get a big red blob, and then we'll get little bits and pieces as the crack, as we get to see every little crack piece as it goes up. Well, with TFMI, we take all of the different modes and we multiply them together, and hidden within each one of those, so 2T, 3T, 4T, and 5T, if you take all that data and put it together and display it, it actually starts to look like a crack. Uh, and then we run this like I mentioned it, like a, there's some other math that we do behind the scenes that will bring up some details. The nice thing about TFMI is two mm -hmm. things. One, it makes the image look much more realistic. And number two, the signal to noise ratio goes up by, I want to say at least a factor of 10. I've had it go more than 100, uh, just depending on what... Uh, D depending on what modes you're multiplying. Um, and signal to noise ratio is kind of low with regular TFM. Um, let me use this as an example. If you use a very tiny probe and you transmit sound, okay, um, your signal to noise ratio will be low, okay, because you're going to uh, bounce off of some things. Your beam is kind of wide and you have very low, it's a small transducer, so it doesn't push a lot of sound, okay? Um, and if you take a, a regular TFM image of a, let's say 2T, okay, so, so T is transverse, okay? So let's pretend, uh, where's my symbol? Okay, let's pretend this symbol here is a probe, and I have a thing, oh, we'll use this, this O in VEO as the target, okay? So I'm gonna take sound from here and it's gonna go in, transverse, it's gonna bounce off of this and come right back, okay? So that's T, T, okay? So that's shear waves or transverse waves. So it's transverse in, transverse out, that's 2T. 3T is T down to the bottom, okay? That's up to the hole and back to the probe. So one, two, three, or uh, one, to three, okay, so to the whole down of it. And then 4T is uh, bounce, 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 okay? One, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you take all of these pictures that you would get, one with 2T, 3T, 4T, multiply them together, what you get is something that looks much more realistic. Uh, and the signal to noise ratio is uh, all the noise on the outside is kind of incoherent. So when you multiply incoherent noise, it basically turns to zero. In fact, it, it gets so small that it will read zero on the screen. You actually have to you actually have to export it and analyze the pixel values outside of the uh, outside of the machine because the values are so low. So those are the advantages. Um, yeah. So that's that's what I'm going to present about. That was something that that I was messing around with with TFM. And I, I thought, I wonder what happens if, and I did it and went, holy moly, that really worked. So I tried it again, tried it again, tried it again. And uh, like, you, you can do modal combinations with the other machines. I, I, like there's some off-board software and you can actually click a button and, and say, what does my 2T look like? And then you click another button. What's my 3T look like? What does it look like if I show them both at the same time? That's modal addition. 
and it looks looks better, but it doesn't look as good as multiplication. Yes, and I, I had Paul, I had opportunity to watch the video before, and yeah. wow, it was the the best video about the TSM that I was. Yeah, yeah, really, really. <laughs> okay, so so for any of the people who are watching or listening right now, and if they're gonna if they're gonna sign in and and watch the presentation, it's on May twenty seventh, right? Yes. Okay. May so if they watch it, you'll notice that during the video, you'll see a picture of me with this background, mm -hmm. right? And I'll be talking. And if I could do the video over, I would, <laughs> I kept having to move myself because oh. <laughs> I put my, ah, uh, yeah, I was like, I was like a little tiny up here. And then all uh -huh. of a sudden the next slide had a word. I'm like, oh, darn it. So I shrunk myself and put myself over in the corner. So if I could do the mm -hmm. whole video over, I would no, have dedicated no, 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 like one spot in the corner just to sit there. <laughs> but it's good, it's good, it's amazing. And um, if you uh, don't register yet to the conference, you can you can use the the QR code QR code in the top of the screen. Yes, put your cell phone and uh, you can turn for the cam and use the, that curve QR code to um, sign up in our conference. Uh, Paul will be speak in May 27, yep. but the conference is hard 26, May 26, uh, 27 and 28. And 27, uh, it's gonna be just international speakers. And don't worry, because we will put the, the subs, uh, subscribe, yep, subtitle. Sub subtitles. Subtitle, I'm sorry, subtitle. And if you can uh, watch in Portuguese, there's no problem, but after, uh, the the lecture, we will have the uh, the around a round table with Paul, Tim Arti. You know Tim. Oh yeah, my, Tim was I, Tim yeah. was my Tim was my phased array uh, instructor at Lavender mm -hmm. in Texas. He is one of my favorite. When when I finished my course with Tim, I said, "Man, if I ever get to teach phased array, I have to teach <laughs> it like Tim because." It was absolutely fantastic. When I when I asked people where should I go, the first thing they said was go see Tim Armit in Houston. He is mm. he is the one to do it. So he's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, he's the one. Man, I, I was in Texas um, two weeks ago when I, I had opportunity to to know Tim and and help with him. And well, he knows a lot, man. He knows yeah. a lot <laughs> about the ultrasound. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about the ultrasound. But uh, to finish our conversation, I want to, um, to do four questions, quick questions. Right. Quick questions, okay? About the, what do you prefer? <laughs> yeah, so, um, fiery, fiery talks, but quick. <laughs> if, you, if you want to, um, to answer, you can, but if not, um, Okay. You, you, don't, okay. you don't need the answer. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Hit me. Okay. First question. Paul, what, what do you prefer? Plate or pipe? Pipe. Radiography or phased array? Oh, good grief. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it's phased array. <laughs> A longitudinal wave or shear wave? Shear wave. And the last question. Olympus or Sonatech? Oh, you're going to make me do this. Okay. So, uh, okay. So the answer is Sonatest. Uh, no kidding. But, um, but I have a good relationship with uh, all of the manufacturers and they've all been super helpful. Um, so uh, I use, I have Olympus gear and my first instrument was, a, uh, was an Olympus OmniScan, the original MX. It had mm -hmm. RD Tech. It even had an RD Tech logo on it, oh. um, and I loved it. And I still think it is a fantastic instrument. Um, I moved to Sonatest uh, because um, it's really, really fast, and um, I felt like it was like flying an airplane. Um, you know how if you've ever you ever sat in a simulator, like a like mm -hmm. a an airplane simulator. Mm -hmm. You ever sat? Okay, so no, it, I, no the the. Okay. 
In my computer, it is, no. <laughs> okay, well, so my, my, my neighbor flies an airplane for uh -huh. a living. So he took me to the simulator. So I got to say, and there's so many buttons, right? So I feel like, I feel like the sauna test Veo has a lot of things you can do with it uh, that you uh, can't do with the other instruments. So for somebody like me who likes to change things and mm -hmm. watch the effect happen immediately, uh, sauna wow. test was the way to do it. Uh, the menu system takes uh, it's it's different. But then once you get the it's like um, learning to drive a standard transmission or a stick shift. Right. Mm -hmm. Once you learn how to drive a stick shift, that's all you want to do. And once I got into the sauna test uh, uh, architecture, I it's hard for me to use anything else now because there's just so many things I can do with it. So I do love my Olympus stuff. Um, Olympus makes really, really nice probes, uh, probably the best. But um, for my instrument, I. I like my sauna test stuff. Yeah. Okay, half and a half. <laughs> okay, okay. <All> right. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much for accept, uh, accepting our invitation, and uh, I'm so glad for for your uh, presence in in our conference. And thank you for everybody to um, see with us until the end the the, um, the live and. You can tell something for the uh, the Brazilian the Brazilian uh, followers. <laughs> I well, I'd, I'd like to thank you for audience. having me. Yeah, th well, thank you guys for having me, and I hope I didn't speak too fast. Um, I know that <laughs> if you if you say anything in Portuguese, it goes right over my head. So I hope that I didn't speak too fast. Um, but I appreciate you having me, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, to presenting and uh, then talking afterwards. Yes, of course. Thank you, I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Agora em português. Obrigado a todos que ficaram até o final.